The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to another Real Agriculture Wheat School. I'm Kara Oosterhouse, and I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who's an agronomy research extension specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. Now, we are standing in the middle of a wheat field today to talk about probably one of the largest pests across the prairies and that is yes you guessed it grasshoppers jeremy what can you tell me yeah so um i mean typically a yearly pest sometimes more of a issue than other years uh, but 2022 it looks like it's going to be um, a pretty challenging pest depending on where you are in the province uh, so it's going to be important to know how to scout for them um, the methodologies to use maybe some of the tools that you can take in and, and how to make sure that what you're actually counting is appropriate and you're making management and control decisions based on the correct information Okay, so uh, you're going out to your field, you're looking for uh, grasshoppers. What's next? Yeah, so before I head to the field, I want to make sure I have three things. I want to make sure I have, so I use my shovel because it is about one meter long. So you want either a meter stick or something that is about a meter. Um, and I love having my stadium counter. Um, this really helps when I'm counting insects because I'm going to be potentially be counting a lot of them. It helps me keep track. I also use it for counting plant stands. Um, so a useful tool to have um, and the sweep net as well, which I'm sure we will pull out later. Um, so I wanna make sure I have those three things with me, um, you know, as well as uh, any kind of visual information on which grasshoppers we're looking for uh, and the Prairie Pest Monitoring Network, so prairiepest.ca is a fantastic resource to find all of the information I'll be talking about today. Um, you know, all of this information really comes from those researchers and that resource. Um, I'm just helping to share that. So thanks to them and all those researchers that put that together. Okay, so you come to the, you come to the field, you have your handy dandy tools with you. Grasshoppers like to hang out in certain areas of the fields. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so typically grasshoppers are going to come on the outside of the field, so the outside rounds, they're going to hang out in the ditches, um, and then as the season progresses, potentially they're going to move into the field. So where you're going to see them typically in the highest pressure is those outside rounds of the ditches. Um, so again, before we make any management decisions, we want to assess to see what our risks are, what populations of grasshoppers are we actually seeing in the field. So getting a count and um, you know, there's different methods for counting different insects. Uh, the way we count grasshoppers is to pace out 50 or 100 meters um, by about one meter. So we bring our one meter tool and walk 50 meters or 100 meters based on maybe um, uh, fence posts and how long they are and then we'll count the amount of grasshoppers that we see. So I'm holding this to get a visual of what about one meter is and I'm walking forward and as I'm seeing grasshoppers jump I'm counting one, two, three and then when I get to the end of that 50 meters I divide that number by 50 to get how many grasshoppers I encountered per meter squared and then I check to see whether that number is threshold or not. Um, so when we're talking about thresholds of grasshoppers in that 8 to 12 range is typically where we want to be taking action for cereals um, and above that you know definitely we want to be taking control um, if we're seeing our crop is already in high uh, stress so maybe in drought situations um, maybe we want to take action slightly before that um, but it's going to depend on what your field conditions look like so that is what we're talking about in terms of threshold for actually in the field in the field boundaries if we're doing this in the ditch if we're not seeing as much pressure on the in on the outside rounds but we're seeing more pressure in the ditch we can do this count in the ditch as well uh, and typically we're in that you know 13 14 15 up to 25 grasshoppers per meter squared um, so that's the method that we're using that's how we're taking counts uh, and then the next step is to make sure that what you're actually seeing in the field and what is actually jumping 
is grasshoppers. There's other insects in the field that hop, that jump, that you'll see that maybe aren't grasshoppers or maybe they are grasshoppers but they're not actually pest grasshoppers. Um, so pest grasshoppers, they're, they're two-striped, clear wing, Brunary, uh, and I know I'm going to miss a couple here, uh, but there, there is a, um, a native grasshopper, the slanted face grasshopper, that actually isn't a pest. So again, going to prairiepest.ca, understanding which grasshopper looks like which, and which actually isn't a grasshopper, um, and then making the call on, on whether you're actually at thres threshold for pest grasshoppers. So one second. So I have my handy dandy sweep here, and I'm gonna put my counter away. So in that same spot that we're doing our counts, we're also sweeping and assessing whether what we're seeing is actually grasshoppers or not. And it doesn't look like we've caught any grasshoppers in here. So through that method, you can get a count, you can assess whether actually what you're counting is actually pest grasshoppers and then make a management decision based on that.